Yo, what is up, my crazy subscribers? This is Joe King Johnson. Before and today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to set up the SG553 from Battlefield 4. And most of the, most of the time, this gun you're gonna be able to use it from short range to medium range battles. And I suggest to use it on team deathmatch, squad uh, squad deathmatch, and also uh, domination because this gun is pretty much great from short range, and it also has the best hit fire from every single gun in the carbine rifle division. Now, as we can see. Here's the carbine rifle division. It does have a high rate of fire as you can see in the bottom right. You can see the rate of fire of 830. So uh, in the magazine size also 30 bullets per magazine but it's no problem. All you have to do is just take out enemies from short range and it's able to do just fine. And also you can take out like around 3 people per mag if you're accurate enough on the head. So uh, the SG553 is just uh, just using a short range as you able to do just good. With this weapon from long range you gotta be very very accurate if not you're gonna be missing every single shot and you're just gonna be wasting bullets for nothing so make sure you're very accurate and be very patient because this gun does rattle a little bit when it comes down to long range but from short range hip fire it's got it's pretty goddamn accurate and the, we're gonna show you guys why it's pretty goddamn accurate as you can see you're gonna have the, the coyote red dot side the reason why it's better than the, compared to the other red dot sides because uh you know the cobra has the t sign the hollow is for sure those is for those uh, lmgs you know for those guns that go all the way around the, the screen you know those that's why the, the hollow size is, is there for and um and it's better than the hd also because the hd actually zooms you really in but you really do not need nothing that helps you zoom in do you need something that helps you out from medium range battles and you want to do it better in, in squad deathmatch you know most of the maps are going to be like very tight very uh, most of the enemies are going to be from close range so do not add the hd do not add the hollow side do not add the reflex side it is a big uh difference i think this one has a bigger area than this one the reflex side the reflex side is just a round side while the coyote's red dot side has the square side and it's a lot better and you can see the area a lot more better also so I suggest to add the Coyote Red Dot side. Anything else, you don't add. You don't need it because this, this weapon is not made for long range battles. Moving on to the accessories, you're going to have the Tri-Beam Laser or the Laser Side, which is this going to help you out on the hip firing. And it, yes, it is going to be pretty goddamn accurate. You're going to be able to see some of my gameplays, how I ended up hip firing some enemies from medium range and I still took him out. So um, yeah, make sure you have these two. Not the flashlight. The flashlight is most of the times in Battlefield 4 doesn't work. Yes, it does blind out people, but not like it used to. So uh, the flashlight, um, you know, you really kind of don't need it. You can actually see the map even though it's dark. Uh, you don't need the magnifier because you do not need nothing to magnify like down the field because most of the time you're going to be able to use this gun from short range. So you really do not need it. Uh, the laser and light combo, you can have it if you want. It's still the same thing as the laser side and the tri-beam laser. So, uh... Uh, and that's about it. Do not add nothing else. Uh, you don't need the iron size. The iron size are quite terrible, so do not add it. All you need it's the laser sight in order for you to do better from hip firing position. The barrel, you're gonna have the silencer, and the reason why is because I think it gets better. Because before I used to have the flash hide, and what this does is increase the hip fire and the range because uh, the flash, you know, it's lowered into a minimum scale, and you can see down the field pretty much clearly. But uh, you know, I don't know. I just didn't feel it with the flash uh, hider. And when I switched over to the suppressor, you know, people um, did not know where I was coming from. I was sneaking around the map. And it was pretty cool because, you know, I was taking out enemies from pretty much close range next to their, to their uh, enemy uh, friendly, you know, uh, people on the, near the team. So people did not know where I was coming from. So I was just taking out people blindsidedly. And, you know, they were trying to figure out where I was. There were some moments in my gameplays where enemies were trying to figure out where the hell am I shooting from. So, uh, so yeah, it is pretty much convincing that the suppressor is pretty good in this game. So make sure you add the suppressor on the, you know, SG. And you should be able to sneak around the map like with no problem. And take out people from short range with no problem also. And on the quicks and stealthily. So uh, make sure you add the suppressor if you guys want to get high kills in every single match. Next, we're going to have the Ergo Grip. And the reason why it's very different from every single one of these grips it's because this allows you to aim faster from hip fire. It's kind of like the quick draw from Call of Duty. But this is only for uh, hip firing. And why do you need this? Because I think this gun is more accurate when it comes down from hip firing. 
from long range, medium range, aiming down the sights, you know, it's kind of rattly and I don't know why. So I just added the, you know, the ergo grip back and it pretty much helped me out on raising my KD because, you know, I was no longer missing and also my accuracy went up. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the red dot side uh, with, uh, I mean, the tri-beam laser with the uh, ergo grip combined with the suppressor, it is a, uh, a great combination because you're able to, to uh, take out enemies from hip fire and it's pretty much insane. So, uh, you guys have seen my gameplays, you guys have seen me use this weapon. So, pretty much there's my evidence. So, um, yeah, and the paint, you can have whatever you want. So, this is pretty much it, guys. The SG-553, I mostly use it on the recon, which allows me to have the radio beacon in the, in the TUEGS. And, um... The TUGS is for you to guys. It's like a like a little sonar. You place it down the field, and you're able to see some of the enemies going around you. And the radio begins for you to spawn in. It's kind of like the tactical insertion from uh, Call of Duty. And um, next, the grenades. You can have whatever you want, but I suggest I suggest to use the incendiary grenade. Do not use the smoke or the flashbang or the hand flare. They're pretty much useless. They don't work as much as like they do in Call of Duty. The smoke sucks. Like literally, it takes forever for the smoke to come out. So do not use none of these three. Use these top four. But most of the time I use the M34 incendiary. So yeah, if you guys want to use you know my grenade, you know, make sure you know you place it down there. If not, you can use whatever you want, the frag, the mini, or the impact. The knife, you can have whatever you want. And the one that I suggest to have the most, most of the time on the field upgrades, will be the spec ops make sure you have the spec ops at all times because this will allow you to have stealth and while on the battlefield yes it will level up every time you kill some certain amount of people it should be able to level up so at level one you're gonna have stealth which is uh you're gonna be undetected by motion sensors except when sprinting so make sure you just don't hold down the sprinting button if you're in a small stage um level two you know c4 explosives you can able to, to have more than six um next motion sensors increases the maximum of inventory and motion sensors to five which is pretty cool you can have like shit lots of them um but uh that's not the one with the tugs though that was that was for the you know the little the little ball that you throw across the field and you, you should be able to uh you know show you guys the enemies once you throw them down so it's kind of different to tugs um, next, the level 4 will be quick on spot, reduces the time you are spotted by 2 seconds. So it is kind of worth it. It's going to increase your stealth, stealthy ways in the battlefield. I suggest to have it all time so you guys can just sneak around behind enemies and humiliate them by uh, knifing them behind their back. So uh, yeah, and you can have a lot of fun doing that. So anyways, um, this is all for now guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the class setup. You know, it's an insane class setup for small matches, you know, like team death matches, squad uh, death matches, and also domination. It is pretty much good for those three game modes. Do not use it on conquest. Do not use it. Um, well, you can use it on conquest, but only if it's operation locker because you need tight stages like those to use this weapon because everybody's going to be right there. So you're going to need you're going to need a gun that has a very high firing rate. So this gun is pretty much great for short range battles i said just to use it and if you're coming from call of duty ghost right now this gun is exactly the same as the arx from call of duty ghost so anyways um you know leave a like leave a comment tell me what's up and tell me what gun should i work on next because i do have the the g36 the type 95 and some other ones the cbqb um i have several different other uh, carbine rifles i can work on so um so yeah guys this is all for now you guys want to you know, want to play with me in battlefield 4 make sure you guys add me at joking johnson 4 so i'll see you guys later and enjoy your day I'm gonna